This segment is sponsored in part by Abbott, helping you prepare for cold and flu season. Well, it is time to get ready for cold and flu season. I guess so. Getting your flu shot, COVID vaccine, or booster, that's the first step. Second step, stock your medicine cabinet. And having the right things on hand in the middle of the night can make a world of difference in it coping. sure can. Mm -hmm. So what are those essential items? Here to answer that is pediatrician and mom, Dr. Amna Hussein. Thank you so much for joining morning, us. Doctor. Thank you for having me. Welcome. So before we even talk about the medicine part, mm -hmm. uh, what do we need to avoid in order to stay <laughs> healthy? Good question, and I feel like that's Everything. a million dollar question, right? right? exactly. So a couple of things you can do. So first thing, make sure that you are getting your flu shot for the season. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't already, make sure you've received your COVID vaccines and the most up-to-date COVID booster. Mm -hmm. That's something I definitely recommend. In general, we do know that there are a couple of measures you can do to sort of prevent infection and infection control. Mm -hmm. Hand washing. As a pediatrician, I'm always talking about that. <laughs> Hand washing. Make sure that if you're coughing, sneezing, you're trying to teach your kids or yourself Cough into your arm, mm -hmm. cough away from others. Masks are able to help us with that. But if you're in public, try to cough and sneeze away from others. Trying to stay hydrated as well is also a really good step, not only to prevent infection, keep yourself healthy, but when you are ill, hydration can really help. Mm. Right. And okay. the other thing listed on there, which I always tend to have a little issue with and have to become more self-aware, don't put your fingers and touch no. your face or near your mouth or chew a fingernail. Whoops, not good. Of course, try selling a kid that. That is like a really difficult thing. Like, don't touch your, I know. It's like, right. don't touch your mouth. What? Right. But are there any like tricks to it mentally to put in your head? Like, oh, no, don't do that. Like, or, or put um, something really bitter or hot pepper on your fingers. Yeah, so. well, I always try to remind children, um, and I think as adults too, try to remember to wash your hands before you come in from outside mm -hmm. so that, you know, for touching things and then we touch mucosal yeah. surfaces, you're trying to avoid that. Also, make sure before you wash your hands, and of course, after you leave the bathroom or anything like sure. that, make sure that you wash your hands. Because then if you're about to sit down to a meal or sit down to, I don't know, brush your teeth, you're going anywhere near those mucosal surfaces, take out your contacts, right. your hands are clean. Right. That's one thing that you can always imagine. So you're at least fitting in hand washing a couple of times during the right. day. Ten times right there if you just mm -hmm. stick right. to those three times I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So with yeah. clean hands, go into the medicine cabinet and yes. get rid of what? Yes. So definitely try to do an inventory a couple of times a year, I say. Make sure you're throwing out expired products. First of all, if they're expired, their safety, their efficacy is not what it was. Mm. So make sure you're at least tossing out whatever was expired. Start so that, fresh. So that Robitussin from 1996. Probably, probably not good. Get, <clears> probably and not I've good. done the same as a doctor, as a mom. That, like, right? you know, I haven't used my allergy medicines in a year. You pull it out and you're like, oops, this expired yep. a couple of months ago. Things get buried Toss in there. It out. All right. So we've cleaned it out. Yeah. What do we want to put in now in preparation for this season? Good question. So going into cold and flu season, we're always thinking, is it COVID? Is it COVID? And I think as a pediatrician, as a mom, and this is something that I recommend to other parents as well, try to keep at-home testing on hand for convenience, mm -hmm. safety, reliability. Abbott's by next now COVID-19 self-test is a great option. Mm -hmm. It's approved for children two years of age and up. You can give it to your child at home, use it yourself. We do recommend within three days, try to take two tests, 20 four hours apart. Oh, okay. Yeah, serial testing is going to give you more data. It's a little bit more reliable as well. So you not only have affordability, reliability, safety, efficacy, it gives you that peace of mind. Right. It does. Okay. Uh, we just had this these are, and this is not because you're here. I <laughs> have these in my home yep, so such I, that actually. my kids already know how to do it themselves. They're oh, like, nice. oh, go here. How old are your go. kids? Uh, teenagers. Uh, right? 13 and 16. Okay, so that's nice. Yeah, they're not toddlers, but it's this is right. the time we're living. That's right? smart, so though, to teach your children how to do it. Do their I'm a test single mom, right and I'm lazy. So if they can do <laughs> something that's I don't think that actually. Is, I don't think something. those two words go to get single mom, lazy. Be, right? You cannot it's not, be. It's not really possible. Well, here we are. Right. Okay, so stock up on this. Anything else that we we need? Definitely. So as a pediatrician, I'm always talking about fevers, hydration, congestion. Mm. So I highly recommend, if you can, also keeping a thermometer on hand. I know a lot of parents are always worried about that number, so I recommend a digital thermometer. It's a little bit more reliable as well. You could stick it under the tongue, mm -hmm. under the arm. So a digital thermometer, you could pick it up at any pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Let's say your kiddo's running a fever, antipyretic medications, they can really help to decrease that temperature, make your child more comfortable. Congestion, saline is a great option as well. Mm -hmm. So saline solution can help. And if your child is dehydrated, running a fever, not drinking enough, something like a Pedialyte solution, like those oral rehydration solutions, can be very, very helpful. 
all all important stuff. And so, I feel like all these things could apply to us too. Oh well, my gosh, I need really. to drink a little bit more water. I need to. <laughs> they totally do. I have been definitely one to use Pedialyte myself yep. if I'm not feeling right. well. I did it once when I was pregnant and had like constant vomiting Ooh. it's something that was very helpful saline we use it all the time speaking of that because then there's the dreaded stomach viruses oh, that gosh, make right. their round wash your hands that yeah, virus is notorious for being like rusty hardy on surfaces they, right it lives on surfaces yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah yeah i hate i do not like the i yeah, would rather I know, right? get a head cold or whatever <laughs> yeah. than the stomach virus that's one i try to stay with yeah How, but basically you just have to ride that out right how would you treat yes, it with a child you have to ride it out with a child it's symptomatic management that's what we call supportive care and it's fancy for saying do the best you can mm. until it kind of wears its way through. But with kiddos, it's very tough because dehydration on them makes everything look right. much worse. Sure. Yeah. Right. So I care less about what they're eating and more about what they're what drinking. They're drinking. Staying hydrated. And so trying to stay ahead of that curve. Things that usually land your kiddos in the hospital mm -hmm. with a GI virus, like a GI bug like that, is usually dehydration. Right. right. So they're vomiting and having diarrhea faster than they're putting in something. Right. Now, do you have a go-to that you always... Have you always but, wanted in that medicine cabinet at all? So time? typically for hydration, I'll usually keep Pedialyte on hand. Mm -hmm. And talking about what we had mentioned with um, expiring, make sure that if you do open it. Now these packets are great because, you know, you can keep it in your pantry sure. in your medicine cabinet. But if you have, you know, the solutions that open up, those have to be tossed within 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Right. So they don't let's stay in the refrigerator right. for forever. Yeah. See, my house, we're a big. We have all of this and Vicks. I grew up on Vicks. Do the Vicks. Yeah. My uh, mother convinced me it cured I do everything. That. So that's what I. Do have you put now. it on your feet and then put socks on? Girl, yes. Oh, I'll no. put it on just if I miss my mom. I'm like, where's Miriam? Oh, I used I'll put to get the under the like, nose and over here. Yes, yeah. that, that has a little bit more soothing effect. Yes. I would say the with feet? the little kids, for people who are listening and have young children, you want to make sure that you're trying to use maybe a baby Vicks instead. We do. It has yeah. the lavender. I'm, oh, I'm, look let me at tell you. you you're all over this. And I'm not getting paid to say that. You're I'm a Vicks expert. Oh. Saying, you were fantastic. <laughs> a so wealth you. of information. Wonderful tips yes. for our viewers Thank today. you. Thank you. You stay healthy. Thank you. We need you to help. Those that don't.